And Cher is just like a foot away from me, just sitting there, just chilling with her 25 year old boyfriend. I don't know if it's sometimes or if this is just the only time like you don't say no to drinks. <laughs> My legs are split open. And the best part I think is the fact that I couldn't get up myself. I think the plane is going down. Oh my God. We have a lot to talk about today, Sophia. Let's do it. Oh my God. I mean, we just went to Paris for 10 days. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> so much. I had so <laughs> much fun. <laughs> like, guys, Sophia and I were on two totally different trips. Facts. Only because... I was deathly ill the entire trip. Like, I have never felt worse in my life. Like, I had, like, a cough, a runny nose, like, a sore throat. My body was, like, breaking down on me. I was so jet-lagged. I was not feeling good. Plus, I had to, like, work U.S. hours during some days. And then Sophia is on vacation <laughs> mode like this no girl. i just like could not stop <laughs> like there if there was something to do i was already there like we went to st bart's we talk about it all the time but like she was on another level vacation mode in paris i just figured if i'm in paris like i'm going 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 <laughs> like i was not gonna take a break if there if i didn't have plans one day i was i made plans i found plans plans found me I, but one I day I was, we like chilled one day. When did you, oh, you, ch okay, one day Sophia was hungover and slept. No, we all just couldn't go out that I night. I don't think I drank that day though, that night. Wait. I just was jet lagged <laughs> and you guys were Wait, hungover. What? I went home early that night, I think. Wait. There was only one night I drank heavily. No, there's one day where we all fell asleep at like nine o'clock. Did we? Wait, where were we? I don't even... Sophia, Wait, I I'm can't like, hardly remember. I think everything was like the same day for me because I was just like, I will not miss out. And it benefited <laughs> me in the end. I was like really meeting a lot of people and like I got a job for <laughs> modeling. I was like, amazing. That's wonderful. Okay, I don't even know where to start this this whole story because I have I have so much to talk about. Okay, so we were in a Airbnb with our friend Cornelia and Cornelia's boyfriend who was there for like four days. Cornelia is also very young and Sophia is very young. And obviously like you guys are ready to party. Like you guys are, I've never seen Sophia so ready to party in my entire life. Like I don't think you took one day off from partying. It was 10 uh, days straight. I didn't take any second of the day <laughs> off at any time but like i have never seen you like so ready to go well i just figured if i'm in paris i'm not gonna waste any time and i didn't <laughs> with partying ever. just everything <laughs> like if there was a place to be i was there breakfast lunch and dinner and i'm so so different in that way like i only wanted to go out if there was like a business opportunity unless it was saturday night then i wanted to go out mm. but like you guys were ready yeah to but saturday night was the night where we were like at place yeah it was a great party we'll talk about that too but i think that i felt bad because i didn't want to party right and like you guys were always going out and i didn't want you to feel like i wasn't like wanting to go out with you guys but i just didn't want to drink but like you guys were like going at it like hi i want to set the scene for you guys too like we're in this small house and it's like a trap house wait <laughs> Wait, what? We were in a beautiful house. No, no, no. no it was no. like a four It became bedroom. a trap house just because you guys were fucking raging. Well, wait, what? Raging, Sophia, raging. Wait, what? What do you mean? Raging? Yeah. You guys were ripping shots on a Monday night. Wait. On a, wait. On a Tuesday night, on a Wednesday wait, night. Wait, we never <laughs> had shots at the apartment. We had shots at like... What are you talking party? about? When people fun. came over on Monday night. Yeah. And this was like eight days in. You guys are still going hard. And right. I'm still deathly ill. And I like couldn't hang. I totally get So that. like that was the tone of like I could not hang. You guys were on a different level. Mm. And like I felt bad because I was on a different level completely. Looking back, it was hilarious to me. And I think like that's what makes it a good story is like the fact that we were just on two different wavelengths the entire time. And like Sophia was just having the time of her life. And I like came back the other day 
and was just thinking back on the whole trip and just like laughing hysterically about like me like laying in my room at like 2 a.m. and you guys are like, woo, like let's fuck it, let's fuck shit up. And it's like Monday night and I'm like, where am I? Like how is she still going? Facts. Like you didn't, oh actually, I guess you did sleep a little bit, but like I also was so jet lagged the entire time. I don't even know how you guys were functioning. I feel like jet lag is just like a mindset. Oh my God, I wish it was a mindset for me. Holy shit. So Saturday night was definitely like my favorite night and my favorite day in Paris. Like I think I felt like okay that day and like functional enough. To yeah, because I think the night before we like had all slept the entire night yeah. and Saturday you were like, it's Saturday, let's do it. I was like, Saturday is for the boys and <laughs> and I'm ready to hit the, the club. Um, and obviously it was fashion week, so people were ready to rage and I was ready. But I think Cornelia was hungover that day or something because she like wasn't quite ready to rage. It was hard to get us all on the same, the same like mindset every day because we're all like doing different things and like some of us are out all day, some of us aren't, and then like nighttime would come, it would be like different plans, and then we'd be like tired, and some of, and Cornelia's, I think her boyfriend was there that night. Oh no, he left that day, I think. I don't know. Okay, so we go to this hotel, Costa, Costas, and we're going to the, I don't know, this like red room place. Somebody will know what I'm talking about. And we're walking around the restaurant trying to find our friends, um, and we like couldn't find their table for some reason. We walk in though, and it's like not a ton of tables and Cher is just like sitting right there. We end up stopping to like talk about like where the, our table is and Cher is just like a foot away from me, just sitting there, just chilling. And I'm like, guys, you know that Cher is like right next to us right now? <laughs> like no big deal, just like one of the most iconic people in the entire world. With her 25 year old boyfriend, I actually don't know how old he is, I think he's like 25 though. He's such a cutie, good for her, honestly go for it. I love it. Then there's like 10 other people I recognize from the fashion industry. There's like creative director of Burberry and creative directors of every single brand ever. And I'm like just pointing them out to people. I'm like, Sophia, like, you know, we're like, this is crazy. Like all these people are here and we couldn't find our table. Then fast forward like an hour, our friend comes, he gets us a table. We sit down, we have dinner and drinks. And I'm like, you guys, we need to get drunk before we go out. Okay, because this is this is how Brad I is always the one when he like wants <laughs> to go out like he is like I'm ready. Let's if he's going <laughs> out like like me, me and all the other girls that we were with like we go out every, like we'll go out like our energy is still there like Brad if he's ready to go out like that is his night that is my and he night. is living for that night and he is going as hard as possible and as that's hard as what possible. I love if I set my mind to something like I'm going for it. But if I don't, I'm completely not going for it. Right. Like, <laughs> I feel like every night you didn't go for it except Saturday. Second, no, except Saturday. And so we're at dinner. I'm like, guys, the thing you have to do is you have to drink before you go out. I want to just say that that's, a, <laughs> I, I think that's terrible advice. It's the best advice ever. No, you were like telling a, like, a, like two like 110 pound girls to like rip shots at eight o'clock <laughs> okay hold on hold on I mean, so I it might work for you but i was like i was like i was like to put that i down. haven't even <laughs> told my like, theory yet to the people okay sorry 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 okay so what she's referring to is i think it's a better idea to like get drunk before you go out because the longer time period you have okay so like you drink and then you go out for like two or three hours and then you go to sleep so wouldn't you want to drink earliest so that by the time you go to bed you are the most sober my thing is i drink a lot before i go out and then i have like a shot or two or a drink or two drinks when i go out depending on the night <laughs> depending on the night this is how i like to do things if i if i had it my yeah, this way is the ideal this is situation. Like the ideal situation it doesn't always happen like this but i'll have like one two drinks while i'm out by the time i go to bed sober enough to sleep like an angel okay because if i drink too much my body is like over functioning and shit gets crazy. I wake up at like 6 a.m. in the morning and I slept for like two hours and I want to kill myself. So that was one, <laughs> this is one of those nights where I was just like, guys, let's rip shots at dinner. So yeah, but, we did. Yeah, and it was wonderful. But like, <laughs> I don't think it's a great idea when you're like going to like a, like a high fashion party with like 70, everyone's like 70, 80 owns the company. And we then, were sober at that party, by the way. Yeah, which is what we should do. <laughs> I was. Or wait, you you were. I was pretty tipsy. sober. No. Okay, okay. 
So my theory didn't work I that think night. the ideal situation is to be like the perfect amount of classy tipsy and then the end of the night you're like drunk and having fun and like if you're at a club or whatever. Yeah. I think that would be my ideal. I think yours is like blackout first and then like have time <laughs> so like, rough. Yeah, let it, so settle, we're let it settle down. Opposites, yeah, yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. But I think you're a boy and I'm a girl and I feel like that's different. So after we did dinner, we went to a party for the man who just retired as creative director for British Vogue. So he's an icon. I've always been obsessed with him. Like, the coolest guy does the coolest covers with the coolest people. He literally just retired, like I think a couple months ago. I know he just had his last Vogue, uh, Vogue cover with all those models. It was like a hundred models and celebrities like on the cover. So we're at his party somehow, and like people like Christian Louboutin is like just coming up to our friend. People like Pat McGrath and the Beckhams and like everybody is coming through the door and it's like such a fun party we get more drinks there we're feeling pretty good feeling cute and then you guys wanted to leave <laughs> guys we're at the coolest party probably of all fashion week and we stayed there for a good 45 minutes which is my biggest regret in life to this day i regret heavily leaving that party i should have stayed by myself we were in a room <laughs> full of opportunity full of it like everything we've dreamed of you like everybody we've ever dreamed of meeting was gonna be there and like we only stayed there until like eight o'clock nine o'clock it was a very early day i think like it had just gotten started i don't even know who ended up being there but it was probably major people and we left and i don't think i really com like thought about this at the moment i was like oh like whatever we'll just go because i was like we'll go to something also fun which we did go to something fun but it wasn't like business fun i mean the night was really fun but i just want to i just want to sulk for a second at the fact sulk. that you we can, left the best party of all fashion week you can sulk and i'm here for you you don't have any regrets leaving that i don't regret anything ever pretty much then we went to what like three more clubs <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know okay we went to one place and i think there was like a bottle at the table and everybody just kept here, take one. Take another one. Mm. Take another. And I was like, this is my night. This is what I'm going to do. And so I was taking those shots. And by the time we left that place after the Vogue party, I had probably taken like four shots. And like three is like my max. Like I don't do more than three in a night. Like that, I'm good after three. I'm four deep. And how was I, lo how was I looking at that point, Sophia? We were leaving and me and like all the other girls were like, you know, like, because we have to be like, to be a woman is to perform. Like we have to be like normal. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, woo! <laughs> That's my go-to. You, like, you were like, okay, whew, we're going somewhere else. Okay, I gotta, I gotta relax. I gotta relax. And then we were like getting our coats and leaving, and you were just like in the car going crazy. <laughs> That's my go-to is woo, <laughs> woo! Every, everybody adored you though. It was funny, I but mean, I could tell that you were like lit lit so we're in this car also full of like maybe like five models i don't really remember everyone yeah all they were really just beautiful girls mm -hmm. everywhere beautiful at all times oh, yeah i was the Fun, only nice, guy beautiful and so this is kind of where it just blacks out for me <laughs> do you want me to take <laughs> this over this is just kind of where like i remember sort of sitting in a car and then i like i remember getting to that next place which ended up being like a real like clubby club. And I think this is where it just really went a little too crazy for no, me. I think like- This is when I started talking to strangers. I think that the four shots like didn't fully hit you until like we got to the club. Yeah. And, and then I took another shot. And then you were like, we're like, let's do more shots. Let's do more shots. And like, I am good <laughs> at tapping out when I know like, any, like I was like tipsy and having fun and it was wonderful. And you were just like really like going everywhere. And then you- found yourself at like a random table and I was like okay I guess we're here now when we had like mind you we had like six other tables where we like, knew everybody else we knew like 20 people there that night and you were like I'll be over there let's go well because it was like a table just full of the most sexiest people I've ever seen in my life I just needed to be at that table and so I was just like I see that's they, where I black out like I don't remember like who I was talking to you just like sometimes I 
I don't know if it's sometimes or if this is just the only time, like, you don't say no to drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say no to drinks. So like, I'm the one I, who's, I'm the one who, like, pretends to take a shot and puts it down. Okay. <laughs> but not that night. So, you were at this random table, and I was with you because I wouldn't leave you alone. I think you started to migrate to that table, didn't you? And then I followed. Absolutely not. Oh, really? <laughs> not that table. You were having fun at that table too. Oh yeah, because I'm not gonna like be not near you. <laughs> like, I, and also like I was like, I need to make sure he's like there still, you know. So these, this table and this like guy pours his drinks, and I was like, perfect. I needed a drink anyway. I gotta get to his level, you know. I gotta like be with him all the time. So you started dancing on <laughs> the. T- <laughs> you started dancing on the chairs, you know. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Did I? Okay, so I, I vaguely remember like just sort of getting up on something, you a were, surface. Okay, so the the booth was exact. I gotta get up. The booth was like exactly like this, and like it's hard to like stand on a booth like in shoes, <laughs> and like it was like this, and you were like really like going <laughs> at it. So like, tell them what happened from there. Okay, yeah. So there's yeah, perfect example of the booth. It's if you're not watching the visual, it's about like the booth. Like, it, it's just a regular sort of booth, right? With like kind of a lower back. It was probably to it, like though. a little taller than this, yeah, like the a back. lower back. So I'm, I think I'm like standing up, on, and it's like a very cushiony chair, so it's hard to stand on, like keep your balance, especially when you're blackout. <laughs> and so I'm like dancing, and I'm just like living life. Everybody's like, "Whoa!" And everybody's like, "It's bottles, shots, whoa!" People are like on the mic. Everybody's like rap, like everybody's like, "Whoa!" It's Paris Fashion Week. I'm like, what? like this, having a great time, and I am really getting into the dance moves. <laughs> like, really, and I get so far into a dance move that I thrust my whole body back, <laughs> and I, and I fall right back over the booth. And these are double-sided booths. <laughs> There's like a table full of. So like- there is a table full of men behind me. <laughs> okay. Straight men. And I fall backwards onto this guy's lap, like head first. He's like having his drinks, like minding his own business. All of a sudden, this guy just falls back into his lap. And I'm like, whoa. And all of a sudden, I'm like looking up at this guy, being like, what <laughs> the your, fuck, bro? My legs were like split open. <laughs> my legs are split open. At this point, I was like, do I like claim him or like. And the best part, I think, is the fact that I couldn't get up myself. And you needed like so a man my- to like lift you up my feet are dead like just in the air the booth is so <laughs> deep that i like the booth is deep on that side that i couldn't get up myself and i d- also didn't know where i was so, like i didn't even know how to get up because mm. it's very dark the and, lights like, were the everywhere the only way you would have been able to get up by yourself is if you kept like rolling right backwards. <laughs> to roll backwards onto their table so i was just waiting there feet dangling in there for somebody to grab my hands and pick me up and nobody noticed for like maybe like a few seconds, like but it was like a long second. It was like a long second. It was like it was one, like one of those seconds that two, <laughs> that felt three, like, four. <laughs> like imagine be like laying on a stranger's lap and it's like one. No, but you're. Two, but the problem is like the, the booth was like the perfect. <laughs> the booth was like the perfect height for like your knees like not being allowed to bend. <laughs> so, like, and Sophia saw the whole thing. I was right there, and like I was like. There, how could I possibly help? Like Some of these girls noticed that I was backwards over this chair and helped me get up. And I, and I stood up and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, like, like what happened? And then the beat drops and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, and then all these like girls, the model girls that we were with, like the table that we like didn't really know anyone at. I was like shocked. Like, I didn't know what just happened. And they were like, <laughs> like everybody was like dancing with you and like jumping around with you and i was like okay i was like all right oh, i would think i was just hoping like if i just mask it by like partying harder then nobody will ever remember that happened nobody remembers and so nobody now, like, remembers. 20, thousand people are gonna know <laughs> like fifty thousand people it's so funny how something can be so embarrassing in the moment and then you like wait it was embarrassing in the moment i was embarrassed <laughs> I was embarrassed. Are you serious? I'm a grown man and I'm falling on booths? 
what the fuck? Yeah, of course I'm embarrassed. I can't believe I just even told that story. I wasn't even going to say that today. But now we're here and I've already said it. So <laughs> no going back. Anyways, so Ooh, then. That was by far like the funniest thing that's ever happened. And then after that, I think it got even more extreme with my blackout because then I just started like, meeting people. And it's like great for me to meet people, right? But it's not great for me to meet people <laughs> I'm that drunk mm. and I was just being very assertive <laughs> and very like wait wait rewind you were like <laughs> I mean you were like I'm a grown man <laughs> I'm grown and I'm falling over like what the fuck <laughs> no it's okay it honestly like wasn't embarrassing I thought it was like the funniest thing ever <laughs> so yeah I meet people I mean I wouldn't do it but like <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up so I meet people no I honestly like I actually have to sorry I can't get over this yet I actually was thinking like I would never <laughs> you would never you would never get up on a seat well you would get up no on a seat. I would get up on a seat but like but you like, would 100% fall over fall like backwards like I would stumble maybe you act like I planned to fall backwards <laughs> you didn't <laughs> plan. no you act like I would plan to too you would fall backwards for sure You've definitely done some things. Wait, is that the most embarrassing thing that you think you've done? No, together. Oh, together? I didn't think that was embarrassing, but maybe, <laughs> I, I guess it's like... You've definitely like fallen off of something, I feel like. Off a boat or something? No, not a boat. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing? This is not embarrassing, but like this is just a funny example. Like, remember when you, we went to that, <laughs> that yacht party and you were wearing like rolled down jeans and a bikini <laughs> and everybody, everybody was in like formal wear? <laughs> No, literally. Well, because I didn't. We had come from the beach, and then you were like, "Okay, let's go to like lunch." And I was like wearing a fine outfit for lunch, and then like all of a sudden we were like in a car with a bunch of people, and then we went to <laughs> then we went to a, a, like a seventy million dollar yacht, and I I get on the yacht, and everyone's like in formal wear gowns, <laughs> and I I look at this girl who I'm actually great friends with now, um, and I look at this girl, and I'm like. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Like, first of all, it doesn't help. I'm like, not like a, I mean, I'm skinny, but like, I'm not like a no boobs, no butt kind of girl. Like I'm in a bikini, you know? And like people are looking, like see it. So I look, I run to this girl and I'm like, can I please have a dress? And she gave me this like beautiful dress. So I was like, thank God I was saved. But at, at the beginning I was like, it was, I do not belong here. And I was just being like encouraging, being like, no, you look great. And she did look great. But like, it was because I was just like, what are we going to do? We had to make the best of the moment. And there was no way I could go home. <laughs> like, like, no. It, and I was like, you look sick. I looked fine. But like, it was so scary <laughs> being in a room in a bikini when everyone else is in like formal wear. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but it's, it's okay. Lot. That girl saved me and she is a queen and we love her so much. She's literally mother. I don't even think I finished my club story. So, yeah. I mean, it's basically over. Like, I, I meet people. I'm being so outgoing, talking to everybody. We went to one last place after that. And we met the beautiful and then family, the we Mexicans. Met, we met our Mexican family friends. Um, who was one of the girls that gave me the dress. Who, who we, we love, love so much. So much. And then Adore I, her. we spent about five minutes at that club. And I realized... I need to go home. I was we like, that was actually the most minutes. fun I had all night and I didn't want to leave. <laughs> I had Why gotten did you there. leave? Because I'm not going to like I not. I saw myself home. <laughs> Could you have? Yeah. Well, I didn't want to like leave you. Oh, you should have. You can always leave me. Oh, it's no. Like totally but okay. I don't want to. No, it's um, like totally But okay. I was having so much fun there because I walked in and I saw like all of Do the I Mexicans like who I love. No, there. you look perfect. I walked in and I was like giving everyone kisses on the cheeks and I was like finally knew like everyone at the table and felt so welcome and at home and i was just like dancing and then all of a sudden we irish goodbye and i was like that was cute i like <laughs> like walking in and then irish goodbye by the way it was like 4 a.m was it 4 35 yeah so like it wasn't like i was going home early guys like, no was, no no like people just were you should have gone home much people earlier. just <laughs> didn't stop until like 6 a.m every night every night and it was wonderful i was like loving it paris parties you think new york parties Paris Wait, parties. Wait, New York parties way harder. Do you think? 100%. Maybe I they, just don't go to those places, I guess. You go to the box. Yeah, but that ends at 4.30. Like, like Paris doesn't stop at 4, 4 a.m. No, clubs like stop and then like 
private parties. Yeah, like after same parties, thing with, like same thing definitely with are New a York. big thing in New York, I guess. Yeah, you can. I guess I if just you don't wanna, do that stuff no, here. Nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody was like, I mean, nobody. That's normal. Anyways, so then after that night, I was very hungover, and I slept basically the entire day, like to like four p.m. Me and my friend woke up and we went to breakfast at like ten a.m. Brad texts me at like twelve thirty and is like, no two. Two and was like, where'd you guys go? Like, what's happening? No, you went to breakfast at 12. I woke up at 2. Okay. And then you're like, where'd you go? And you're like, no invite. And I was like, you black. I was awake, night. though, at 12. Okay. And I was like, these fucking bitches. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm starving. I just didn't want to wake you up. I thought you were, like, <laughs> going to be asleep for a while. And I just really didn't want to interrupt your sleep because mm. I thought you would need your slumber. Yeah, yeah, then yeah, we yeah. come back around, like, 4 because we, like, walked around, I think. And then you were like still in bed and like it was pitch black in your room and I'm like can I come in you're like yeah and you're like I was like let's go shopping or something and you're like <laughs> I don't know and then I was like we'll, we'll wait and you're like okay <laughs> I can do it now the thing that happens when I drink is like I can't sleep so like what will happen is I'll sleep for like I'll go to bed like four I'll wake up at like eight or like 7 a.m. and I'll like have to like take Tylenol and like drink a glass of water eat something and then I can go back to sleep right but, like I have to do that so like I was basically up and then I went back to sleep for like the rest of the time that doesn't really happen to me I like yeah. have to get up in the One morning day will. <laughs> I get up in the morning and I'm still ready to go and then like maybe I would like a little like two hour nap in the middle of the day mm. and then I'm ready no one day your body will just like won't be able to handle alcohol while you sleep like, okay. it's just like all of a sudden your body's just like, whoa. We'll see. And then you have to wake up at like 7 a.m. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I wake up earlier when I drink and go out all night than I do on like a day where I've had the best sleep of my life. Like, I, mm. it's just because I, well, I mean, there's obviously like scientific facts behind that. Like, there's, it's because your body's like, meta- can't metabolize alcohol and it like wakes, it like literally ruins your whole sleep cycle. Yeah. That's why I like to not drink a lot because I know that even if, I have two drinks my sleep cycle is going to be so fucked up Mm. and I will not have a clear head the next day so like I limit my drinking to only nights where I want to like really go hard yeah and you go hard when you go go hard hard. yeah and then you are more like a steady drinker (laughs) you get so mad when I just tell the truth wait you how are you not no like I can like in Paris like I 100% can just go nonstop. yeah yeah Okay, and I'm saying I'm more of like a blackout drinker. Like, I'm not saying you're like lying, but I when you said steady drinker, it sounded like I have like a glass of wine every night. Like normally in New York, like I'll, I like go home to my parents' house on the weekends and, and like do nothing. Wine. Literally never drink with my parents. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, in Paris, but in you guys, Paris, in Paris. In Paris, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, a steady I can, drinker. I'm a more of like a one night blackout Like drunk. I can go, I can just like tell myself I'm not going to stop. Because like I wouldn't want to like miss out on a night. I want to miss out Paris. on a night so bad. <laughs> yeah, like in Paris, like I'm in Paris. Like I'm not going to like waste any time. I guess I think of Paris as being so similar to New York that like I do not care if I miss out on anything. And I also think like well, I Well, like, like if I didn't feel well, I would be fine missing out like i don't care but like if i'm i never don't like i'm never sick enough where i like have to stay in yeah it was also raining the entire time it was like (laughs) fascinating like every single time it was raining so the odds were just stacked against me like to have a great time because i was ill it was raining every single day and i'm so upset and sorry that you didn't have a good time no i had a good time i just couldn't get to the great level because of all just I mean, just the sickness alone, like, I felt horrible. Yeah. Like, I should have just not went because I felt horrible. Like, I could not keep up. Mm-hmm. I couldn't be myself. Like, right. I couldn't function properly. And then I was thinking back to St. Bart's. I also was sick there mm. for an entire day. I think we needed vitamin D. St. Bart's was easier because I think we woke up and went to the it's beach so, and lounged. Yeah. And, like, didn't, we, like, didn't drink. Actually, did we drink it during the day in St. Bart's? I never did. But the thing is also reflect. How does everyone do that? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, how do they do that? I don't they know. They drink. Some people in St. Bart's drink. Every single second. Yeah. No, like they would wake up and drink at 12 shot. o'clock. Shots. Shots. Tequila. <laughs> Tequila. Yeah, we didn't drink during the day ever. I also think that reflecting back on both of our trips, recent trips, that you are are a female <laughs> and I'm not. Yes. And it is so prevalent when we go to these very like these places that are surrounded by just wealthy men. And it's like they 
my girlfriends just like have an easier time with everything and like yeah but like I'm you're never our, gonna have you're, our, you're like our girl like you're in with us no matter what but it more just feels like i'm like the person who shouldn't be there like i just feel like i just shouldn't be here i've also like been only friends with guys for so long and like it's a whole different world to me like being around straight people and like being with girls that like i don't even know how to navigate that yeah, world but anymore. you're like whenever you're with me or any of the girls like you're our you're our guy like you're there you're yeah, more like, than welcome than anyone bad. else. I told you this when we were there. I like feel bad being at these dinners and being at these places because I'm like, they just want hot models. Yeah, here. but like they wouldn't, we wouldn't be there if you weren't there. Like we, you there's an be. ultimatum. <laughs> no, like I would never go to any of that stuff if you weren't there. No, but like you would go to Paris and like go to these things still. Yeah, I, but you're like, saying like if I was there, I would still go. But that, that, and I love that. Like I obviously appreciate that, that, but like, I don't think it's the best place for a guy to go. I see what you're feeling. It's my mistake that I keep... This is the second time we've been to a place that's, like, surrounded by just straight, wealthy men who want young women. And, like, that's dumb for me to, like, think that, like, it's a good idea. <laughs> but, like, it's a good... It's, like, a fun, cool room to be in. And, like, you're always welcome if any of my friends are there. Me. Yeah. I think... Yeah. I get why it would feel weird. Though yeah. I actually don't really know the vibes that the men are doing there. The men are weird. I actually they don't almost know. Like, don't like, talk. Yeah, they don't really. They talk. don't speak. They don't have a personality. They don't move. <laughs> they don't dance. They don't anything. And they just have money, and they just spend it, and spend it, and spend it, and pay for every dinner and every drink and every bottle service and car and everything. Which is they're just like. Piggy banks. I don't really understand any of it, honestly, if I'm being honest. I just kind of... It feels like a simulation when you're in these places. I mean, I get why we're invited. It's, like, fun. But then, I just don't get where everything's coming from. But me either. And then, like... But the, that's just in New York, in L.A. I don't feel that here at all. I feel like I get people. I Like, people are cool. They, like, hang out with you. Even, like, the really wealthy people are still, like, fun. I don't know. Maybe it was, like, a Fashion Week thing. In Paris? It's like the circuit. It's like the billionaire circuit, right? It's like Paris, Fashion Week, it's St. Bart's. It's like those are where the ultra wealthy hang out and they have a very similar type where they like don't speak. They have this like really kind of like aggressive way to them. They like command a room when they walk in, but they also don't talk. And then they hang out with a bunch of girls that don't speak. It's silent. <laughs> yeah it's like silent i guess i don't really know it's so in it's i always try to have fun whenever i leave the house i just am like dancing yeah no but it's i'm like the model that like talks that, like, and that's why I, like yeah I'm, not, I'm like not six foot 120 <laughs> like i just i'm like the fun one with the camera <laughs> anyways what's what are do you have any stories from paris any experiences i just had a blast all day every day the food uh -huh. was really really good the food like tasted real and I now, like, I never, ever eat bread. This oh is so God. boring. The baguettes. I ne Ugh, Nobody cares. No, we I should never talk about the baguettes. ever in America. Like, I can I tell you never eat bread. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I like, because I don't know. I just feel so, so tired when I have bread. And in Paris, I was eating croissants, sandwiches. She had her first croissant first in croissant. Paris, by the way. It was life-changing for was, her. I imagine it was like walking on water it felt like <laughs> it was a piece of bread melting in my mouth yeah describe it what it, was that it, experience it felt like, like i was felt like, like biting into a cloud like right. i've never done a drug but i imagine like <laughs> acid feels like that <laughs> she was i think you described it as like so thick but so thin yeah like it was a lot <laughs> but it was nothing you know <laughs> so it was like mm, yummy it's like it tasted like nothing but everything yeah it tasted like like a whipped cloud. The Paris baguettes are unlike any other. And here we go with the baguettes. I mean, I'm mean, sorry, the, the croissants. The croissants are unlike the baguettes, anything. But the baguettes. This was where I felt like <laughs> simulation. Why is everyone <laughs> walking around with a baguette? Everybody. Like, uh, and uh, it's like a uh, two foot long, th no, four foot long baguette. Is that your lunch? On like the shoulder. Like, yeah, and also I literally never eat bread in America and I was eating bread all day long every day 
and I never felt tired. I think maybe that's why I didn't stop and like could just keep going because the, the food was so good for me. Yeah. I just never felt bloated. I never felt like sick or tired. And you look scared. Really? You definitely don't. <laughs> Do you think I lost weight? Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you. You look underweight. Thank you. It's my favorite compliment. <laughs> like, oh my God. You look like you're getting too thin. Like, ugh, mixing a burger. <laughs> You know, I'm like, okay. Uh, I honestly love the rain. Wait, I didn't mind tell the, rain. the baguette story. What baguette story? The Pe- highlight of my, uh, the other highlight of that night. The story in the beginning of this podcast today. I forgot the most important part. We went home that night starving. And Sophia LaCourt had the best idea of her entire life. She surprised me mm-hmm. with a like Instacart order or whatever the fuck it is there. And she got. I smell it now. That she got like it. she got like um like frozen baguettes. Like half cooked baguettes <laughs> from like the their version of like CVS. There, it honestly <laughs> I thought it was really sketchy when I ordered Just it. Really but sketchy. I, but I was thinking like if we r- wake up in the morning and we're starving, like this <laughs> might be good. Yeah, yeah. Brad on Saturday night when we were like you were blacked <laughs> out and I was like okay and like you were hungry and you had ordered like. Eighty dollars worth of McDonald's or something. Yeah, it was or like McDonald's. something. It's like a vegan like yeah. burger place. I ordered and every burger they had. We were hungry, so I like put those baguettes in the <laughs> oven, and you're like, "We have an oven," and like I was like, <laughs> "Just like let me do it, okay?" And then it was maybe the best thing, guys, ever. No. By the way, she tells me to set the oven, and I'm blackout, and I just put it to four fifty. I don't know what it, I wouldn't even know what I was doing. I, somehow I got the oven on. Yeah. Also, like, I know it's just numbers, but it was, like, in French. Like, everything was in French. No, like, nothing made any of, sense. Like, literally nothing made <laughs> So, sense. I just, like, put this oven on. No, yeah. And she just popped them in. And, like, did we set a timer? I don't remember. Well, like, I was pretty sober, but I, when I turned on that oven, I was like, <laughs> I am not going to burn down this house. Like, I am stone cold sober. I, I was like, I am, like, ready. And Brad was, like, enjoying the baguettes so much. Wait, so then we took we took them out at the perfect time. Perfect They're time. perfectly golden, you guys. Can you speak French? Yeah, these ba- the baguettes were called demi baguettes. Frequa, 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 carrefour. So we take them out at the perfect time. They are golden. Oh, like the perfect crispy golden. Mm. And I get one, and I just pick it up with my bare hands. Yeah. And they're hot. They're steaming hot. Mm. And I rip that shit open. That bread was spectacular oh my it was like that bread that like slowly rips apart when you open it like it was just beautiful it and the steam perfect. comes out it was like a commercial yeah for a baguette it was amazing it it was truly amazing and i took that first bite every single thing why did it taste so no crazy good everything in france tasted better but the baguette i mean like i've never experienced a baguette like that maybe because you were drunk yeah no but then i had them the next day and they were, and they still, were still so good. so good. I'll never forget those baguettes. Mm. And I'll never have them in America because I don't want to ruin I don't want to ruin it for myself. No. And don't. I feel like some French person I think it's probably only in France. You can find frozen baguettes in Yeah, America. but like not nothing in America is as good as like the food there was just tasted like food. I didn't realize they taste that like food, huh? America <laughs> <laughs> like I buy like the most organic organic most expensive wild caught things and then like wild everything was bare-handed better. caught yeah like fished for it by myself <laughs> took my gun out and sh- found the deer um no but it's <laughs> the deer so like i literally try to find like the best types of food ever and every single thing in france so no matter where i ordered it from it tasted like better i mean i know we went to nice restaurants but like it was just better um yeah, she's we're also at like the nicest restaurant she's yeah. like it tasted so good you know like, you're so right but i, go to, I have star. been nice <laughs> yeah, true i go to nice restaurants in america too and it's like yeah. still like they were like above and beyond but the, the butter was amazing everything tasted like rainbows and butterflies <laughs> <laughs> the butter was so good no i think everyone should go to france just to like taste the baguettes and the butter Are you they go gave back me every year yeah yeah if I can, yeah, for sure. One day they gave me like radishes with butter, and I guess that's like a French thing. And it was like so good for I was like, why am I eating like a full radish? Like it was weird, but I liked it. Um, yeah, and I basically just got back yesterday. I 
no, Where two am days I? ago. Yeah, I got back two days ago. This is my first day in New York since because I went to Jersey. And I'm like still saying merci. Like, merci Me beaucoup. Too. Like, I don't know. Merci. Yeah, and I'm like, bonjour. <laughs> um, I got back like three days ago. And I just want to talk through that day with you. So I slept about four hours the night before my flight because I couldn't go to sleep. Was just like jet lagged still. Slept for four hours. Woke up. Was a zombie. Was just like please put me in a in a seat in a lay flat seat immediately and i got on this plane and some weird shit goes down that i can't really talk about on the podcast because i don't want the person to know about it whatever that's the and one we're also on a, know. i'm also on a plane full of models from fashion week everybody's looking gorgeous and i i close my eyes maybe five minutes after i get on the flight recline the seat a little bit out for five hours oh yeah i'm so happy i wake up by the way missed all the food missed all the drinks nothing i am parched (laughs) i am like starving but i'm slept wow yeah i didn't eat on not looking back on it like my friend and i just don't eat we just didn't eat on the flight (laughs) we had like we shared a thing of pringles and just didn't eat at all that's crazy yeah so i wake up i have like two hours to like watch a movie i think i watched like a half a movie or something and then i went back to sleep for another hour then i woke up got to new york got to my apartment showered washed my dog for some reason like i just felt like i needed to wash my dog like i just felt like i need to get the sins off of everybody you know i washed there my you hair go with the jesus talk yeah <laughs> i need to wash my hair religion podcast here, whenever guys. i come whenever i come back from trips i like need to wash my hair like i don't yeah. know like just planes make me feel like i have dirty hair so i washed my hair washed my body took a nap for four hours Woke up, ate dinner, went to sleep at 8 p.m. And woke up at 8 a.m. Wow, you were really... So I slept for like two days. Yeah, you were really... I slept for like 36 you hours. You were really down for the count. Oh, I was so down and out. I got home from my flight and like I still think I had like some sort of high from Paris. <laughs> and I was just up forever. God. And then I woke up at like 8 a.m. the next day and I was just... The jet lag just never hit me. It's crazy. Yeah. But I fell last night I fell asleep at ten and woke up at like seven. I guess that's normal. I will say though, like since then, my sleeping day, I have felt the best I've ever felt in my entire life. And since Paris, like I've felt the best. Like sometimes even like situations that maybe just weren't the most optimal, like me being horribly sick in Paris and mm. it raining every day and making me a little bit depressed Aww. ended up being like a really good thing for me because I'm so happy right now. Mm-hmm. Like I am, I was so excited to film today. I was so excited to be at I'm work. I'm always excited to film with you. I was so excited to like sit at a desk and be at work and like just look outside. It's so sunny and it's just beautiful it here really nice. and this city My is Uber just driver like. to take advantage of the nice weather. Yes. I was like, don't worry. I have so many plans today. <laughs> and the city is just so, so much, energetic I and i guys laugh it's like I'm so just, much better you feel free to like laugh out loud you know <laughs> anyways i've just been like happier than i've ever been in my entire life good i'm glad i just only want you to be happy and i was upset I'm when so you weren't happy. happy babe never be upset when i'm not happy babe <laughs> um one thing i want to say that i thought was like a little bit funny but i'm not really like great at telling my own stories <laughs> uh, i can tell for you now. <laughs> um so um my friend and i were on the flight and somehow we got to sit next to each other and we had an empty seat in the middle it was like the most lucky thing in the whole wide world and we really spread out and we were like this plane is ours now like ours and we were like all right let's watch a movie together so we get headphones and uh we picked skyfall there's like a choice of 30 and i'm like really good at sleeping on planes you watch at the same time yes we like (laughs) We pressed it together. What? That's the cutest thing ever. So we like watched it together. And I'm really like really good at like sleeping on planes and boats. I get so tired for some reason. I don't know what it is about me. I have like a sickness where I just clock out. So we put this movie in and I put my headphones in. And I'd knock out immediate. I didn't even see the opening scene where like the whole song happens <laughs> in the James Bond movies. Like I missed that. I don't even like it was Skyfall, but like I was just like right when Adele was singing, I was like, out. Good for you. And um, 
I'm jealous. I had my headphones in still, and I'm I was sleeping until like the end of the movie. And you know how in James Bond movies, like action scenes, action scenes mm-hmm. after action scenes, and it's like pow, pow, yeah, pow, yeah, yeah. and you're like, <sighs> yeah. So I'm like sleeping heavily, like REM sleep. Nothing guess I like have the sound these... of guns to put you. To yeah, sleep. and I like guess there was like a crazy scene mm-hmm. at the end. I honestly seen the movie ten times. I don't even remember, but like there, I guess there's like a crazy scene or something, and. I'm listening to it, to it, and I start to like wake up, like I'm half awake, and I'm I think this plane is going. Down. <laughs> yeah, and in the in the in the movie, it's like. <laughs> yeah, I I think the plane is going down. Like I start to like tell myself I'm feeling turbulence at like the moment, and I'm like I'm like, well, if we're going down, I'm staying asleep. Like I'm not gonna wake yeah, up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, like that would be I, optimal. Yeah, like I'm not gonna wake up if we're gonna go to sleep like i'm just gonna stress myself out so like i'm half awake half asleep like thinking this plane is gonna like crash and then i'm like you know what i gotta just see what's going on (laughs) so i wake up and i'm like oh thank god it was just skyfall and then i couldn't go back to sleep after that me and my friend were chitter chattering the whole entire time and the girl (laughs) behind us starts yelling at us like can we be quiet i'm like it's five o'clock in paris right now like she told you to be quiet yeah like two times and we were just like talking normal like normally that's crazy but it was a really really fun flight i like flying with other people i also like being an economy like it humbles you you know yeah like stay humble (laughs) Uh, yeah i love it somebody commented on my um instagram and they're like why not first class like i could never on an eight hour flight i was like yeah same like what do you mean i could literally never (laughs) okay we had a four hundred dollar flight and you had a two thousand dollar flight it was four (laughs) thousand okay we had a four hundred dollar flight and you had a four thousand dollar flight it was worth every penny i could i could i would do it a hundred times over oh my god i like the no it's fine stay humble it keeps you humble sophia though also, can I can't, like, so buy a four thousand dollar flight sophia crazy. though can sleep with her head on the tray in front of her yeah i go like this i'll pretend it's a tray and i just go and she sleeps for hours like a beautiful i will wake too. up and then i'll with, go like this sophia i'll wake up with shoulder pain neck pain like i'll somehow have like yeah an indent in my head like i, I will f- not be okay on the flight there i fell asleep before we took off and then the flight attendant had to wake me up seven hours later she nudged me like, like three what? times and i was like who the fudge thinks they're nudging me i'm like sleeping right now she's like can you put your seat up and your tray up and i was like oh, merci buku that's crazy merci. no yeah i'm really really good at sleeping you just like don't drink water and you don't go to the bathroom at all the whole time i know right no it's oh crazy God. and that's why that's why i was like ready to go when i landed remember yeah, when i walked in the house and i was like i guess you also slept the night before and then slept again on the flight well no because my flight left at 11 and i woke up at 12 there you're a soldier. <laughs> I'm a soldier. But then you also had you had that day where you just crashed. Yeah. It was like 6 p.m. and Sophia was out until 12 a.m. Remember? Yeah, I fell you asleep at like 6 and then I fell asleep. I woke up at like 1 and then I fell asleep <laughs> at 3. And then like, I woke up at like 10. It was like a full day of sleep. And then I, I was like, is she okay? Like, should I wake her up? Yeah, but I don't think we like missed anything. So I was like, thank God. No, but like I think that, that day everything just your sleep was just like okay let's finally have some sleep here yeah and then i never slept again never once again (laughs) never again so sophia like doesn't really care about national i mean world landmarks what would you call it like a world like a landmark like a yeah the world wonders i don't know what are the world wonders that's not that's not a landmark yeah i appreciate them but like i'm not gonna go like (laughs) waste my whole day like looking at it it's like you know how like most girls are like i've always wanted to go to the eiffel tower like they have like an eiffel tower picture in their bedrooms growing up like yeah like in the and the chanel thing like the chanel sign in the eiffel tower was like the most every girl had it yeah i'm not i'm not big and oh and audrey hepburn well i have audrey hepburn and like marilyn monroe photos but like i don't have like i'm not gonna like go to the eiffel tower right like like, i don't care and so (laughs) i'm like what do you want to do today it's like the first day we were there and then i thought maybe we should go to the eiffel tower maybe Mm -hmm. that'd be good for sophia to like see it be kind of fun like most people want to go see it we like walk there well i saw it like (laughs) like i could look up from anywhere and see it like why would i want to go like we we walk there and she's like okay (laughs) 
Wait, I don't want, do you want me to like admire it? Like I, it's great. <laughs> no, I agree. And that's why I think no, it's that's funny. Like, someone coming to New York and like going to the Empire State Building. No, I think it's funny. Like it's great. Because like, like I also don't care at all about the Eiffel Tower. And like it is, I'm going to piss off every French person. It is one of the ugliest like architect. <laughs> you think it's ugly? It is a like a weird triangle filled with ugly pieces of metal everywhere what am i gonna think it, how am i gonna think it's good looking i think that is gorgeous i was like Wait, what do you think is gorgeous about it i mean i think it's like a beautiful like specimen kind of like the mm. like the statue of liberty like it's gor- like i think it's like gorgeous thing but i don't care to like touch it i get a statue because it's like somebody had to carve that that's pretty sick i mean i guess architecture the eiffel tower like you had to people had to build, build that but that's more like that's more like mathematics like you're like you're yeah, like which figuring out how I to make something stand in that shape. It's like yeah, with like a, five with times statue, seven is hard for like, me. Like imagine the Eiffel Tower. They built that. No, perfectly. it's a cool it's, like yeah, architectural yeah. feat. But like I don't think it's a pretty tower. But I do think. But the when things, it like sparkles. The thing that I love about no. Paris and I, no, <laughs> the thing I love about Paris. I mean the architecture, right? Like the in general, like it is the most beautiful place. Mm. I have ever seen in my whole life. Everything is perfect. Like the paint on buildings, I would be like shocked by. Like if there was a statue that was like covered in gold or like co- colored black, there would not be a speck missing. Right. And there would not be a graffiti anywhere. Mm. You would not see a piece of gum on the sidewalk. Like it was just crazy. Yeah. And also my other favorite thing, the awnings that light up with the name of the restaurant. Mm. I don't know what that was, but I took pictures of them. Aww. I just thought it was so cool that every awning had the name of the place lit and backlit. It was the most beautiful. It looked like Disney World. Everything was gorgeous. Like walking around was gorgeous. The architecture was gorgeous. It was like insane. It looked like castles were everywhere. Like New York, I think, is the most beautiful concrete jungle in the world. But like Paris is just as beautiful in the completely opposite completely, way. Completely, yeah. I love it so much. Like everything was perfect. Also, like regarding looking at the Eiffel Tower, you could just look at it anywhere. Like, why do I have to be close to it? Why does there have to be an unobstructed view to see it? Like, I see it. Like, what do you mean? It's great. Here I am. <laughs> like, yeah. I liked when it sparkled, though. It was cute when it sparkled. Yeah. I was at dinner when it sparkled, and I was like, oh my god. Like, I could just like see it. It's so cool. Oh my god, it's sparkling. Yeah. Like, it's like <laughs> looking at me. Wow, it's so pretty. It's just for me. Whoa. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean. Eiffel Tower. I just not my vibe. I don't know. Like doing like the touristy things isn't my vibe. I want to like right, have an experience. No, I don't want to like walk around and like be like look at things that like. Yeah. Like I just want to be there and experience things in that place. I want to see what the vibes are. The vibes were always high on my end. Vibes were always high, babe. Always high. I had so much always. fun. Always. I had so much fun. Especially like all the people that were there. I enjoyed it. The company of everyone. Yeah. It was basically like New York in paris though <laughs> like really? we, ha- we hung with new yorkers the whole time i guess like it was just we, yeah, brought, but who else we basically like brought we like there the crew friends. of new york to paris yeah <laughs> yeah true <laughs> like we were in paris i was like wait we're with a bunch of new yorkers right now how funny is this we're like in paris but with new yorkers only yeah probably get some parisian friends at some point yeah i didn't i mean i didn't really i mean i met some new people that i wouldn't have met in new york we would eat in paris rarely wait, first of all wait Eat like our outfits or like eat like <laughs> we like, would my always outfits, my outfits uh, ate every, every night. time every day our outfits ate but we did not eat <laughs> no it was actually really really weird like <laughs> I, I would eat one meal and like not be hungry yeah it's because the adrenaline like you're just going and you're just you're like in a different place you're like experiencing new things and you're not in your usual eating cycles so like it just i also just don't eat when i go places I'm trying to think if I eat, like, a lot here. I mean, I guess I eat, like, at least two meals a day. Yeah. And, like, six <laughs> coffees. Did I have a lot of caffeine? We had no. a lot of caffeine. Did we? I had coffee every morning, but not, like, anything crazy. Yeah. We would start getting ready for dinner at 10 p.m. Getting ready. Yeah. Well, you would get ready at, like, 8. Well, like, one night we went out to dinner at, like, 10. One night we went out to dinner at, like, 6, 7. Every- and then... No. Yeah, one night... The earliest was, like, 8. But then we went to dinner at, like... Every night would get like <laughs> later and later yeah. to the point where it was like eleven thirty dinners. Yeah, and I was like, "Why are we at dinner at eleven thirty? Yeah, true. It was crazy. Also, like we wouldn't get served quickly. Oh, we'd be there until 
anywhere. Like 1 a.m. just waiting to get a, a server. Every single restaurant was like, if you sat at a restaurant, it was a three hour thing. It was never, never like a quick, quick thing. Like <laughs> usually I'm like, if I were to eat breakfast in New York, it'd be in and out within the hour. Sit and they're down, trying coffee. to get you out. You, yeah. They want to flip the table in New York. Mm-hmm. In France, they like, they're not even working there. It's like an event. Just, just if you try to go to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, like I liked it because I was on vacation. But if I lived there, I would have anxiety. <laughs> Me too. I would have raging anxiety. If you try to go to breakfast, lunch, and dinner in Paris, that's your entire day. No, it took the entire day. Because like Cornelia and I, one day, when you woke up on Sunday, because you were a little drunky on Saturday, <laughs> you woke up on Sunday. We had already gotten breakfast, and like the breakfast was like a three-hour thing. We like were bonding, and then we went to lunch, and we just it was seven o'clock by the time we got back. Because we just went to lunch. Like, just lunch. And, like, <laughs> the thing is was that I learned toward the end of the trip um, was that you have to just get up and ask for something. You have to yeah, just you go. Have to get the bill yourself. Yeah, and, like, if you want another bill. coffee, you just have to get up and ask for more <laughs> coffee. No, it's really embarrassing. Like, I was like, oh, like, that's how you do it? And I was like, I would rather just wait. It's so scary. But I also think it's, a, it's an American thing. Like, they don't want to, like, they don't really want to serve us. Like, they don't like them. Like, it's known. Like, they do not like Americans, and they do not want you oh, to be there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a thing? Yeah, it's, like, a thing. Hmm. And, like, well, I heard that... everyone, when they heard my last name, like, a couple people, they were like, ah, La Corte, a French girl. <laughs> I was like, yeah, even though I'm, like, super Italian. I'm, like, scared. <laughs> like, yes! You're like, we! I was like, Messerie, like, beaucoup! <laughs> <"Wee." laughs> yeah, I was like, French, finally! Somebody cares! <laughs> But, like, meanwhile, like, was never going to say that I'm, like, super duper Italian and then, like, like, Irish. You've never known anything French in your whole life. It's just, like... I got off the plane. Forget I forgot that I was just going to a new country. Like, I wouldn't (laughs) know any language, obviously. And I got off the plane and all of a sudden, like, the plane that I took from New York, everybody on the plane spoke French. It's, like, transformed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were, like, um... They were, like, how do you say goodbye in French? Au revoir. They were, like, au revoir, au revoir. And I was, like french fry like what do i say no, like that's no so funny that you say that though because i feel the same way where like you get on a plane in america yeah and i and hear then, like a new york and accent it's like, yeah, and it's, it's like, like what's up you Bala, guys and it's like yeah so at home but then, in new york all of a sudden everybody on the plane starts to speak the other language and like wait am i the only bitch here that doesn't know french and it's like because you get off the plane you just hear people think what's up i'm like what you were sitting next to me this whole time. You're from fucking Brooklyn. <laughs> for some You're reason, from Staten Island, literally. bitch. And for some reason, like, I I don't know what it is. Maybe, <laughs> like, <laughs> you're literally, you're from Staten Island. Like, like what are you all doing? All of a sudden, you're a French Yeah, speaker? like, all of a sudden, you live here? You're you're wearing, like... No. You're wearing, like, like Balenciaga. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? All of a sudden, it smells like baguettes and everybody speaks french yeah uh, the jig is up that's another simulation thing no that's crazy and then for some reason i'm not quite sure what i what aura i was giving off but everybody just like assumed i spoke french i was in the bathroom like after my eight hour flight i like wanted to wash my face and like just like lit like be clean so i went to the bathroom aesthetic what the clean girl aesthetic vibes. yeah always <laughs> so i wanted to like go to the bathroom wash my face and then somebody that worked there like spoke like a paragraph of monologue of some sort of thing and I just like looked at her and I was like (laughs) and then she was like um really really sweet I could tell she was sweet but I had no idea what she was saying she knew no English and I knew no French unfortunately she like was like oh English English and I was like yeah and then I thought she was gonna like maybe speak a little English and she didn't either and then she said um if I had there and I was like uh, I don't know. She's like, oh, no, no like, if that's how. And I was like, what? And then she was like, ah, we. Oui. And then, like, looked on her phone and showed me a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And I was like, I didn't even know that. Like, she's literally it. saying Eiffel Tower? Yeah, like, if she just said, like, <laughs> if she said it with, like, an LA accent, I would have freaking understood. But I, like, like Eiffel Tower. I couldn't understand anything anyone was saying. And I felt so silly. But thank God most of the people spoke English there, like, to help me. And by the end, I like had I knew like three w- words in three. French, and I felt like an icon. Yeah, no, yeah. you're like a local at that. Yeah, point. at that point, I was like a local because I could like have a really basic conversation for like zero seconds at a time. And I knew bonjour. Yeah, exactly. And that's all. It, and baguette. It's a, that's all it took. Yeah. Au revoir. You know. Merci beaucoup. 
Versit. <laughs> I just made that up. I don't know if Versit is Versit. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. That was a lot. A lot. Was we, it? We, <laughs> I think so. Okay. You don't think so? I never. You never. I never think so. know what people are going to like. Because every time we finish these these episodes, she's like, "Did we even say anything?" <laughs> yeah, I like black out she every blacks time. Blacks out. I'm fully here, and we said a lot. Okay, good. And I th- I listen. I don't know what I was going to say, but that is it for today. We're here every single Thursday, and we love you guys so much. Make sure to check us out on YouTube for the visual version if you're not already. Right, Sophia? Correct. (laughs) See you there. Bye, guys.